record this one because we're gonna go into it right now. No to everybody. All right. Now, that's where day three. Well, but this is the beginning of day three. I, we gave y'all a lot of 48 hours. But it, this, this looks good in class. I need you to be like this in the field without Brother P, without the one case, Peter, Al, uh, Peter. I need you guys to have confidence. Confidence. That's why I drill theory so much. Again, we get we, we all gonna go back and on Monday our phones are gonna ring and we're gonna have a refrigerator repair call. Oh, that's okay. I took the course. Game time. Very simple. No cool. No cool refrigerator. Show up. Remember, the fridge has to be plugged in at least 24 hours. They don't do us no good if we arrive and then they plug it in. I have a fridge that's not cool. Is it plugged in? Yeah. No. Plug it in. We get there. Fridge has been on for at least 24 hours. Step one. No cool. No cool. We look at our user interface. We look at our thermostat, our temperature control. Is the unit even on? And if it is, if there's preset temperatures on the UI, you know, 33 and negative 2, whatever the customer decided, that refrigerator should try to mimic those numbers. But we have to, we're the technician now, so our job is, is not doing that. Our job is to verify why it's not doing that. Since y'all been in this class, everything that we've shown y'all has been with numbers, have been with measuring devices, nothing's off the cuff, nothing's guesswork. They're all stuff that you can put a tangible reading to it. We said step one, making sure that the doors is closed, open your doors with your temperature reading device, record your temperatures. Don't just go off this, it's not cooling properly. What if it is cooling properly and the customer don't know what they're saying? You'll be changing this, that, and the third, and it's cooling properly. Verify your temperatures. We said, what should our temperatures in the freezer be? Zero. Does everybody know that? Does everybody gonna remember that? We said that our fresh food is gonna be? 37 plus 9. All right, stop answering Kate's name. So good, but thank you. Okay, our temperatures are not that. There's some tests that we can do with the doors open. We said we wanna listen for some things. What are some things that we can listen to? Yeah, evaporator. Evaporator fan, what if we don't hear it? To press the door switch. That's a trick. On some of these, they have reach switches or you have to have like a magnet in order for the door to close. If you ever get a gasket, don't throw it away, right? Cut it up and I'm gonna show you something that I keep and I use. Hold on. I use this magnet. This works. But if you need a magnet, let me find what I use here so I can. Nonetheless, you mimic that the doors close, the lights turn off. On some Samsung's and LG, there's a delay. Don't panic. Write this down. Write this down. On some Samsung's and LG's, and these new refrigerators, the way technology is going, this is a good general rule of thumb to not freak out when you hear when you if you don't hear the fans come on right away. Okay, if you don't hear them come on right away, don't freak out. Wait 10, 15, 20 seconds. Now, if you don't hear it after a minute or two, okay, we got a problem. But for Pete's sake, since this is sealed system training, let's say that the fans are working. What other tests can we do if it's a no cool from the freezer compartment with the door open? What's something that we should take a look at while we're here? Uh, well, without having to remove the oh, car. Oh, okay, nice door. Exactly. We, maybe we have a defrost. Maybe we have a defrost, right? What's the size of the defrost? What's the size of the defrost? What's the size? 
Yeah, if we have a if we have a refrigerator with a failed defrost, meaning that it's failing to defrost, that heater element is failing to kick on and melt that frost off. If we have that, how what would that look like? Do you care to be with shop? The fan might be making noise hitting the ice. You will hear sounds. You will hear sounds that, and when they open the doors, the sounds go away. They'll say that. Um. Mac, Mac, will you? I think you will. Ah, yeah, you probably got something. So, um, you also said that. Um. Okay, what about the evaporator cover? What would a fail? What would a defrost failure? Look like on that evaporator cover. Snow. Snow. Write this down. There's a key difference between snow and ice. Write this down. If you see snow more than or rime ice or that kind of frost on the evaporator cover, that frost snow type, that's the force. But if you see that solid water and it's liquid and it's frozen, ice, that means so ice is water dripping. You got a water leak. Maybe an ice maker fill tube line. Maybe the ice maker um, mold is cracked. Maybe it's overfilling. Well, in that case, you will see ice. Clear ice. Not to be confused with the ice and the defrost. A lot of people don't know the difference of that. What about just uh, there's heat entering the, the area? That's a good point. If you have air intrusion, one telltale sign is you'll see droplets on the roof. Oh, okay. You'll see droplets on the roof, and the food in the freezer will have a, like a layer of ice, on it, like frost, like a layer of frost on it. That's always the big not necessarily. Write this down. Air intrusion points of contact or areas to look at for air intrusion. Gasket. Anyone care to take a, a, a whack at another one? I'll give you a hint. You put your cup in. Dispenser flap. Okay. How can we check that dispenser flap? What's some test that we can do to check light. that dispenser flap? I like test. Light. You could do that. I like that. How does that work? You put your flashlight from the inside or outside? From the outside, and you look to the inside, and you can see okay. why, why the flower is closed. I've never done that. Never what done. I always use is at least two, three tablespoons of water, put it in the shoe. Open the door, put it in the shoe. If the flap is good, you shouldn't see water trickle down when you put your cup. If water does, you may have a weak dispenser flap. But that's an area of air intrusion that will lead to those kind of headaches. Another area and another place that you should look at, the ductile. Got that there in the flap. Does everybody know what that is? The drain? Yeah. What is it? The duct bill, the, the, the drain, the, the little drain tube. Okay. Sometimes they come off, rats will eat them up, and from that rear, you'll get that air coming to the unit, causing those kind of headaches. So it's always good to look at your drains, make sure that they're well intact, you know, that they're properly inserted, and that you don't have air intrusion coming into that freezer compartment. Brother, don't say okay. You got it. If not, we'll do a demonstration. You got it. You're talking about from demonstration. Right here. You don't even need to get up. Right here, brother. I want to show you something. Okay. You see this guy here? Yeah. This is your drain, right? Mm -hmm. You got water that will that will drain down in here. Ah, and fill into this pan. Okay. This is your con your, your condensate pan, okay? okay? If this this is if this drain 
doesn't have like a grommet or, or, or a tube or anything, you know, kind of covering it up, you'll actually get air intrusion through there, causing those kind of nightmares that we discussed earlier. Okay. So again, just to recap, you got your dispenser flap, okay. your gaskets, okay. and your uh, drain. Areas that of, uh, of, of interest that one should look at if we suspect air intrusion. But again, we don't have that. We got a good seal. We don't have that defrost. Yes, sir. This is just about uh, the frost, we see frost. Say again? This is if we see frost. This. Well, we're, talk well we're, we're going down a, a, a scenario. And the scenario is a no -do. And I'm just walking you through some of the tests that we should do. And we said, what are the signs if it had a defrost? What would it look like? And we said that the rear evaporator cover will be all snowy ice, that frosty ice. And we said that air intrusion may mimic some of those kinds of signs, but they'll show a little bit more um, signs as well, like the droplets of water on the, on the top. You'll see that frost over all of the food that lay that thin film of frost. You know, you may want to check for a near intrusion at that point. And that's why I was showing you the, some of the points of where air can enter the box. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay, so we don't have a defrost. We don't have a evaporator fan. Our dampers are good. We got airflow. Our return duct isn't blocked off. We got to pull the fridge up. Yeah. We pull the fridge out, we get behind the fridge. What do we want to do? What do we want to look at? Condenser fan. And you want to hear that? Condenser fan motor. We spoke on Monday about condenser fan motors, how to test them. Remember we showed the schematic? Remember we said some of your condenser motors are going to run into VDC or VAC. They're going to be either 120 volts AC or 5 to 12 DC. I gave you a little trick to kind of tell what fan you deal with. Does anyone remember? You can read on the actual fan itself what it has. Also the wiring. You'll notice that your DC is the wiring. Yeah. Yeah. So you can tell it by the wiring. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the vibration in that tricked me and led me to believe my compressor was running. And it wasn't. So for sure, for sure, verify that the compressor is running. Put your hand on it. Take the amp, a clamp, read it. We said on the, the screen what the technical amperage should be. Talk about it, Peter. I see you reaching in for that book. Point five. Uh, five, five, five. That's it. Follow yeah. on. Good job. We did an amp clamp. We felt that compressor. We know it's running. We know that condenser fan motor is running. Got to tap in. We tap into the system. I'm going to give you a few numbers. You tell me which, what, what is it. We tap into that compressor and it's giving us about 50, 55. But it's running. What is that telling us? Inefficient compressor. Is he right or wrong? Okay, it's, well, it's kind of on the low side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, Where do we tap this? On the compressor low side. Yes. Yes. Now maybe. Yes. We spoke. Where's that compressor? Right there. Gentlemen, we spoke about this. Gentlemen, we spoke about this. What was the compressor energy? Oh, 0.5 to 1. 0.5. 0.5 to 1.5. Yeah. Based on that Whirlpool PDF, I typically say the 1 is a good 1, 1.2 is a pretty good indication. So if it's higher than that, it was like 2 or 3. Well, brother, you just don't go. We, we, that's not definitive. You have multiple, um, you know, red flags. You got a no frosted um, foil. Your compressor super duper hot. You know, your just is gonna go off an amp, bro. Like you, 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 you gather. You're making the most educated, you know, uh, conclusion based off of all these uh, tests that you run. So we spoke about this compressor here. We said that on this side, you got this little guy by itself. What's that for? There's two, there's a suction and a discharge. How can you tell which one is which? Yup. If it's your hot side, will the line be smaller or bigger? Smaller. Does anybody disagree with it? Write that down, Peter. Write that down. Gosh, this is important stuff. I can't emphasize this important stuff. What's the, the wider one we said was your suction. Now, we tap in on our process sub and we get 55. You said, why, why, does anyone care to challenge him or cosign him? Why do you say that? Because with suction, it should be drawn. It should be drawn uh, down. We said that that takes place in the compressor during what stroke, up or down? Down. We said that during the down stroke, it was pulling from that capillary and evaporator. Yep. And we said in the up stroke, condenser, yoda. So with, uh, with the uh, 55, 55 will be okay if you will sit still. It's not running, it's not running. Correct. Stable up. But not, don't go off just that number, brother. That's not a, a clear cut number. You may see 53, 27. Mind I'm using digital. But when, you're, uh, but when you're when it's actually running. No, it's that. You should see it down to zero. Right, right on the yeah, You should see it down to zero. If you use an analog, look, again, you'll see it. It'll just be it'll be running, but at 55, it should be down to zero. You know what I'm saying? Inefficient compressor. We spoke about those valves, where those pistons are, not closing, not opening. All right, but scratch that. I got another scenario. What if it was in vacuum, in, in inches mercury, five, ten inches mercury? Yeah, a leak, a leak or friction. Does anybody disagree with that guy? Don't answer no more. We have, let's go with that, with that, uh, you know, scenario. We assume that we have a leak or a restriction. What is a simple, a 
with somebody that did an answer that I tried to. What is a simple test that we could conduct? Simple one, just to see if maybe we do have a reason or not. Hello, Hello. Yeah. Hello. I was going to say something. Hello, Freya. Well, what should happen to our pressures now? Good job. Now, if we add, and you see it just slam back down to that, um, to that, um, you know, back into that back, back into that inches. What do we say more than likely that is? You add, add, it's not, it's not going to work. So now comes the fun part. Now we're going to enter into the seal system. What scenario do you guys want to go with? An efficient compressor, leak, or restriction? Restriction. Restriction. Okay. We spoke about restrictions. Where do your restrictions more than likely take place? We said that your capillary can get restricted. What are some tech, what is a process that we can do, not you, you on, on those choice of words? What, what is a process that we can do? Uh, vacuum. Oh. No. Any... Remember, we have a restriction. We're trying to clear the obstruction. We're trying to use a, a, a substance to push that out, to, to remove that from the system. And we said that nitrogen is a good aid. But when we do that, we're going to do a flush, flush the system. Right? We spoke about isolating the system. Do you guys remember that? Isolating the system? If we isolate the high side, now, you, now the floor is free to open again. Now it's just challenging. But you got to, that's good, excellent. But I need you to remember this also, not just in here. When we isolate the system, on our high side, what are our two components? Anybody care to go against that man? He's big, but he's friendly. He's a good guy, trust me. I know he's cool. He's right. Low side. So let's do, let's do, let's perform that sweep down there by the compressor. We did it yesterday for the high and the low. That's what I say right now. Don't remember me because how can Oh, you have to see. Don't, your brain will fill you. Write it down, you'll never fill you. If we want to do that, if we want to do that test, right, that isolation test, or we want to flush the system, we want to flush our low side out. From the rear, where, where would, what, what pieces of copper tubing will we remove and all that, you know, what, what would we be doing? Well, if they had a restriction, number one, we have to evacuate the system, remove anything on the system. And we'll show you that today. We didn't go over that yet, but we will show you. When you remove all the freon, now the system's empty, now we gotta try to remove that restriction. We're gonna use nitrogen. At the compressor, where are we gonna do that? Correct. Where, where, would I, where would that be located, though? All right, hold on. Let me get my notes. Stay with me. Rick had a wonderful presentation.
What two components do we have to remove? Well, uh, again, our loci. Here's our capillary. Right? We, we, we have suspect to believe that our restriction is in here. But we said at the location, in the customer's house, sitting at the rear of the compressor, there's two pieces of copper tubing that we can remove to conduct that, to perform that, that flush. Where, where, where can that be done at? There's one. Yeah, in the process. For me, well, you, you have to look for two. Oh, you, either there if you're in the... No, ground, that's one for sure. Behind. Yeah, or in the evaporator. No. About a filter drop. Oh, shucks. Sure. Look, look, look at the filter dry out. Yeah. There go your capillary. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. Is that inside or outside? It's outside. You're right. Simply remove here. Simply remove here. Here's your nitrogen. We'll begin. We'll, we'll hook up our, our we'll hook up our, our uh, access. Access. We'll put one there. Remember, I said it's a capillary. It's a small tube. Casey, we have to we have to pinch it off. But we want to put one there. This brother said, right here. Is that located at the rear? Is that inside or outside? outside. That's something that we can do while we're sitting down, a little uh, blanket. You know, all our, this is a test we can do. So now, where do we say we're gonna put, we're gonna put pressure into this low side? We don't know how much. What do we say was a good number to, to pressurize that system to, to put nitrogen. This is how the nitrogen is gonna flow. And come out from here. It will vary from uh, system to system. Each refrigerator has a where can we check to be hundred percent definitive? On the then laser. You guys are good. Label plate, low side. Let's just say 125, just for you know practicality reasons. I told you that as you put nitrogen into this low side, and you, right here, which, uh, what did I tell you, a rag, you seen the video, they, they put a napkin, I told you, check your hand, you know, put something there, but you want to inspect what comes out of it. Is it black, oily, sooty, is it white, powdery, dust, what are we dealing with? Or is it good? If it's good, more than likely, which while we're there, we should also do our hot side, right? Just to verify, right? Before we put it all back together, it's a matter of our solder in here, our solder in here, and just adding an access valve here, and performing the same test. But now, it'll come here, it'll be free, it'll come right out the back. Or we could do it the other way, like this, whatever. But that's removing restrictions from the system. Brother Al? I'm good. Talk about it. To be clear, make yes, sure that, you know, so we can basically, if we try to like do the whole system, like we're trying to flush the whole system, we can actually uh, uh, cut, from, cut from the uh, high end loads out of the person. Nope. Low, no. Easier than that. Remove the filter dryer altogether. And now, guess what? Let, let me clear some of this crap up. Oh, an easy way to flush the entire system. 
Remove the filter drop. Completely, cut it out. Take it out. And now guess what happens? Because you never want to go through the dryer. We took the dryer filter out. That's what our system's going to look like. Yeah. Is everybody in agreement with me? Yeah. What if there's something in the, uh, in the filter? In the what? In the filter. Oh, uh, well, we got rid of it. We're going to put a new filter. But we're going to, but let, let's, let's go with that. This filter is that. Well, stick to that. But for now, let me show you something. Remember, we got another valve. We got an access valve here, right? The one. Here's the answer to your question, bro. Here's our third valve. Right here, you said that that's your process. The one we took the filter drive. We literally removed it. Now that we have, now we're going to hook up our gauges, uh, our nitrogen right here. We're going to hook it up to our tank. We're going to put 120, and we're going to flush nitrogen. So what's going to happen is you're going to have nitrogen actually coming out from both sides like this, from here. Out through the capillary and from the condenser through the yoda out. So you're gonna have air coming out of your yoda and coming out of your capillary. Well, not air, but nitrogen. That's only if you have a refrigeration. You yeah, haven't seen that before. That's your job today. I'm gonna to show you right now. What I'm trying to do is I'm gonna always always thought that when you go from one side to the other, like second time you want to just do the uh, do the low side. I never actually ran nitrogen through the compressor. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, I don't know. 120. Can you, and that wouldn't mess up the uh, the, the oil or the uh, freon is in there? There's, there's no freon in it because we've evacuated it at this oh, point. Oh, okay. Remember, we check it for a restriction. Restriction. We have a feeling that our restrictions in our capillary or in our evaporator and our condenser and our yoda, we don't know. So we remove the, uh, the uh, filter dryer. Filter dryer. We, uh, we, That's we, it. And we're hooked into the, uh, we're hooked into the uh, process. The process of, With the, nitrogen, 125. Right, so then once we do that, we should actually feel air coming from both sides. Right here. With nitrogen, right? Nitrogen. Comes from both sides. It seems like the easiest way to get rid of the restriction. That is the easiest way. I'm teaching y'all the nuances of it. You'll hear stuff like split the system and stuff. I'm teaching you that. That's the easiest way. And you'll feel a lot of both. Obviously, coming out of the yoda, you'll feel greater pressure. It's a greater diameter, as opposed to your capillary. It's a thin, small tube. Thin, small tube. You're going to have a different pressure come out of it. But at all costs, you should have pressure coming out of both. And if you don't, well, then I've showed you as well how you can isolate the system and perform other tests here as well. Yeah, because when I felt that uh, one pressure, I was expecting a lot more when we cut it over here. Yeah. So I was thinking a lot more uh, force. So uh, especially coming out of the cap, it's going to be smaller. It's going to be small. So, I mean, should it be like a partial, partial restriction? No, you always feel it a little less than the yoga. But you yeah, still yeah. feel it coming out. Oh, okay. You still feel it coming out and good. Nice strong flow. Yeah. Uh, if it's, it's sputtering, yeah. Yeah, you may have some stuff in this. Yeah, though. yeah, so consistent. Consistent yeah. is what you're looking for. Not sputtering, right. in case you heard that. Yeah. Consistent. Uh, Peter, consistent. Sputter will be a thin, thin little restriction, and you got some junk in here. That one could be all sludgy. Yeah. And you got to keep that to it. Clear. Because when did I say that the recall comes? Sunday afternoon. You're in the beach, you got the corona, you're watching the game, you're happy. Oh, that job ended, it's not COVID anymore. Why can't you come back? And it's Sunday, your Monday's airtight boat. Where the hell am I gonna fit this in? You don't want that call. Now that you're here, take that extra step. Take those preliminary, do those preliminary things. Help you, help you. All right? One question. Yes, sir. You said about moisture. Now we're fitting out the the, the, the dryer, right? From your experience, should we put that same dryer in there? Or Hell no. 
Well, they buy the brand new one, all done. All the time. Brand new. Bad. Um, okay, so we said inefficient compressor. We said uh, leak. What we could do for a leak is simply add a little to see the pressures go up. And then we also spoke of a restriction. But let's say we have a leak. Now working on this big, massive Viking. 48 inch big board, big body Viking. Stainless steel. Compressor on top. We got a leak in this thing. But it looks like this big monster. But at the end of the day, that big monster operates no different than this. So if you learn that, that monster is nothing. Now we gotta find that. I told y'all what we can do. The one, if you want, we can unsolder here and here, perform a vacuum. And what would be our, and, and, and okay, so we, we hook up, which we did here, we hook up our, our vacuum pump, we go into our low side, and we pull the vacuum. That, that, that pressure now is an inch is mercury. We close, we turn off the vacuum pump, close our valve. Yeah, negative. We close, we close everything, make sure everything's you know, tight, closed, where should that pressure remain? Should it want to go back up to a zero? Should it remain in inches? What, what should happen? It's just amazing. So, Patrick's gone. But he, the door's outside, I suppose? After this, guys, we'll take a 10 minute, all right? 15 minute. This is the last point I want to touch on. Can somebody turn on the, okay, we, we vac, we, we doing a, um, we pressurize, we doing a vacuum on this evaporator here. Can somebody, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, the one, yes. remove the, the vac, uh, micron gauge. Remove this guy here. Take it off and take it off the evaporator. No need, just take it off the evaporator over there. Thank you, brother. You the man. All right. Beautiful. All right. Take that off. All right. Let's put that to the side. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Something. Okay. Put that right there to that. Beautiful. And then. Beautiful. All right, the one. Turn on your um, gauges. All right. Give it a second. All right. Go ahead and turn on your vacuum pump. It's in the back. All right. Go ahead and open your gauge. Either side. Nah, open it up. You get negative pressure because it's representing the system in a whole. All right. Now, go ahead and close the valves. Go ahead and close, turn off your vacuum pump. All right, now look at these pressures. Notice that they just stand there. They ain't moving, they ain't dipping, they ain't doing nothing. 
So now, to answer his question, that they do, it wants to climb back towards zero. Go ahead and slightly unscrew, very slightly that that blue. And I say very slightly, just very slightly. Just allow a little bit of air to come in there. Keep going. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There you go, right there, it's good. Look what's happening to my pressures. Look what's happening to my pressures. They wanna climb back towards zero. That's the indication that you have been. Just been pressurizing the system. Well, now we're vacuuming, so we're pulling it in the negative. But I'm gonna allow you to put the pressure. So go ahead and remove this, go ahead. Remove the, uh, turn the nitrogen bottle off. Make sure it's, close it. The nitrogen bottle, yeah, close it. All right. Uh, remove the uh, vacuum pump, the yellow hose. All right. Go ahead and hook it up down there. The no, nope, yep, to the nitrogen. You'll see it right under here, right here. All right. Tighten the system back Tighten it back up. All right, now go ahead and open that valve, yep. Okay, now go ahead and crack your gauge. Very gently, very gently. Now close it and look how your pressures now are in the positive, they went up. Because we added, when we vacuum, we remove. When we pressure, we add. Vacuum, remove, pressure, add. All right, but now look, Look at our pressures now. You notice they're pretty stable. 37.7, mm -hmm. 38.8. Go ahead and crack that blue like you did again, brother, and watch what happens. Okay, look, I hear the air coming out. Look at the pressures on my gauge. You, you're gonna wanna notice them start to wanna drop towards zero. Mm -hmm. So again, you can pressurize, you see, 36.8, 36, you see? He's just mimicking if it had a leak right, by, by, by removing the nitrogen. So that's the point I'm trying to prove, y'all. Vacuuming, you remove. Charging, you add. Or pressurizing. But still, those, 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 those pressures are this thing left alone wants to sit at zero. It don't want to have and it don't want to be over. If that makes sense. It don't want to be plus or minus zero. It's when we add to it that the pressures go up. Does that make sense? Is this making sense? Yeah. 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 I feel like I'm burning y'all out. That's what I'm taking about 10 minutes. I'm telling you, I need, I'm, I'm seeing there's and the lights. We're <laughs> We're coming in at uh, one. Break. I'll bring some coffee. I'll go get. We'll go to do a coffee break. All right. Good class. Good seminar.